Welcome to the Getting Started with Freeway 5 tutorials. This is the first of three which will introduce you to creating a simple website. This tutorial will show you how to work with images and text and how to create a single web page like this. When you start Freeway you'll get the new document dialog window open. Down the left hand side you'll have a list of different template categories which have a few templates for you to get started with if you want. For now we're going to choose the blank category and the blank template within that. Click OK and we'll be prompted to give the document a name and save it somewhere. I'm going to save it in the documents folder which is the default location. When you click save the new document will open and you'll have a blank page and this is our starting place for every website we'll build in Freeway. In Freeway Setting up a page's dimensions and how it aligns in the browser window are simple tasks to achieve using the inspector, a powerful context sensitive palette. If the inspector isn't open, click once on the button titled inspector on the far right of the freeway toolbar. Because we started a new document, the inspector palette is going to show all the information about the page. So to change the width of the page, we click on the general tab in the inspector palette and in the width field we just enter the number 700 and the page will change to 700 pixels wide. We also want the page to align centrally in the browser window so we click on the align drop down and choose center. We would also like to apply a different color to the page so it's not white so click on the appearance tab of the inspector palette and then click and hold on the drop down and we'll have a list of available colors to us in the freeway document. If we go to other because we want to use a color which isn't available at the moment and then in the colors palette which is opened up we change that to 204 for red, green can stay at 255 and we'll also have blue at 204 and this will give us a pale green. When we click on OK that colour will be applied to the page. We also want a darker stripe at the top of the page. We can achieve this by applying a background image to the page. To do this we select an image using the drop down under the colour in the inspector palette. We select the image headerbar.gif which is in the tutorial one media folder and we open it. At the moment it's been tiled everywhere all over the page so if we change that horizontal to center and vertical to top the stripe will just be contained to the top of the page. Let's put some content on the page. We'll start off with the site's title. So we'll draw a graphic box on the page itself and as we want this positioned fairly precisely we'll use the inspector palette. So I click on the general tab and I type in 10 for the X position, type in 50 for the Y position and the width is going to be 400 pixels which is that and 60 pixels for the height. And in this box I'm going to type in the name of our friend Morris Cowley. And because this is a graphic text box and not HTML text I can select any font on my machine I want to set this name. I'm going to set select Big Caslon which is all the way up the top of my font list. There we are and we want that to be 60 points in height so I will use the inspector palette again for that. Next thing we'll do is apply some colour to this text. So if I select just the word Morris in the name and I'll put some colour values in the colour palette here and it's going to be 204 for the red, 204 for the green and 204 for the blue and that will give us a rather nice shade of grey. If I select the word Cowley and click on the colour drop down in the inspector palette I can choose the bright green colour and now we have Morris Cowley set in a tasteful combination of light grey and green. The next thing we're going to do is to apply a bit of a shadow to this. So we select all the text and we click on the appearance tab and we then click on the shadow button. 
and this gives us a shadow around the text. If we open that part of the inspector palette we can change the opacity and the um, offset of the shadow. In fact the opacity is at 75% which is what we want and we'll just drop the offset down to 4%. There we are. If we click off that we'll now see that the name Morris Cowley has got a drop shadow around it. We also have a graphic to put on the page which is Morris Cowley's corporate logo. So if we select the graphic tool again and draw, draw out a graphic box. We then go to file and import we can bring in his logo which is a GIF file. Now that's rather large but we can scale that to the box using scale and pad from the contextual menu which you get to by doing a control click on the image and we'll also fit box to the content as well. And holding down the alt and shift key we can scale the image using the corner controls and we want to scale this down so it's 95 pixels wide and 95 pixels high. And you can watch this in the inspector palette. We watch the width and the height going down, 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 96, 95. There we are. So now we've got logo at the size we want. We like to put a bit of a drop shadow on this as well. So click on the appearance tab again and click on the outer shadow icon and just change the offset down to 4 pixels. The opacity is fine as it is. Click and drag the logo so that its X and Y coordinates are 590 for the X and 16 for the Y. And you can watch the inspector palette as you drag to see if you've got those coordinates absolutely right. And if you're a bit off, don't, matter, don't worry, you can use the cursor keys to nudge them as well. There we go. Let's add some text which tells the world what Morris Cowley's profession is. We could use graphic text again, but we're going to use HTML text. It loads faster and is also accessibility friendly and can also be indexed by search engines. So we draw out an HTML box and type in the word photographer. And if we select all that text by double clicking on it and we use the inspector palette to choose the font. Now these fonts are those which are commonly found on every other machine connected to the internet and HTML text is drawn using fonts on the client machine, not on the machine you're designing on. So we're going to choose Helvetica and we're going to have the size of 18 points. And if we command click on the box we can then position it as we want and we want it to be at x 10 points and 125 pixels in the y-axis. I should change that to 125 there. And we want the item to be 300 pixels wide and 20 pixels high. And now is probably a good time to save the document. We'll now import an image using Finder. If we switch over to Finder and locate the tutorial media folder we can just drag and drop our image straight into Freeway. I'm using the Beach Huts JPEG file. When that image is in Freeway we can just select the general tab in the inspector palette and we can scale the image down using the shift option key combination which we used earlier on. And we want to scale that down so it's 208 pixels wide. There we go. That there. And now we want to add a border and shadow to make it look a bit like a photograph. So if we click on the appearance tab in the inspector palette and click on the border and shadow option for the image, we can now flip open the border options, click and hold on the color drop down and we'll select white. We want the uh, size of the border to be 9 pixels and to be on the outside. The outer shadow needs to be around 50% and the offset let's make that 8 pixels. And so now we have an image with a photograph like border around it. We want a couple more images with a border around it like this. 
The easiest way to do this is to duplicate the image we've got already. So if we select it, and we then go to Item and Duplicate, we want two copies, and we want them at a vertical offset of 170 pixels. This will create us two more images on the page with exactly the same kind of borders we've got already. We select the second image, we go to File and Import, we can bring in the sailing barge picture. Now the sailing barge looks a little bit small in this image, so if we control click on the picture, go to Graphic and Scale Up, we do this a couple of times, we can make the image a little bit bigger. And we can use these drag handles to move the picture around inside the frame until we're happy with the result. And I think that's about right. For the third image, I'm going to go to File and Import and bring in the low tide runnels in the sunlight image. Now this is quite a big picture and as you can see there aren't many runnels or sunlight in it. But if we go to the contextual menu again and click on Scale and Trim, the picture will be scaled down to fit the image nicely. We'll now move the images to sit underneath the word Photographer. And because we want to make it like a stack of randomly placed images, we can use Freeway's Rotate tool to rotate each of the pictures just a little bit. and position them so that they look a little bit scattered over each other, like so. You'll notice that Freeway has now decided it's going to combine all these pictures. So when it publishes the page, all these images will now be output as one picture, and not three. Now we've got the header and the graphics in place, we want to add some text. So let's draw out an HTML text box. If we click in that box, we'll have the flashing cursor and we go to File, Import Text, and we want to choose the welcome.txt file. And we click on Open for that, and we got some text in our document. Select all this text, and choose the Georgia font, and we'll give that a size of 14 pixels. We select the text which says Welcome to my website, and make that 18 pixels high, and we'll click on the bold button in the style options as well. So we command click on the item to get back to the general tab of the inspector palette. We want to set the X value for the position of this item to 348 pixels, the Y value of 200 pixels, and the width and height is 350 pixels and 180 pixels for the height. Morris also has a new exhibition he wishes to publicise on his site. So again we'll draw out another HTML text box, click inside it and use import text to bring in the exhibition.txt file. We'll select all the text in there, we set the font to Helvetica, make the height 14 and we'll centre it. And then we can choose portions of the text to emphasise the bits which tell you where and when the exhibition is and what it's about. Right, with that done, we want to make the box white, so we select it and we click on the colour drop down in the inspector palette. And because the text is butted right up against the edge, we can add some padding to sort of push it in a little bit. So we choose four pixels in the padding drop down. And finally we want to position this box. So we set the X coordinates to 348 pixels, the Y to 395, and the width to 328. To finish we can choose item, fit box to content, to make the item fit the content exactly. As this is an HTML item, it will only affect the height. And at this point, it will probably be a good idea to save the document. It's a good idea to check how things are going to look in a browser as you work. 
Freeway has a built-in function called Preview which uses the same graphics engine as Apple's Safari browser. Just below the toolbar, three buttons allow you to switch between the Master page which is currently highlighted and Preview views. Click the Preview button. Freeway switches to Preview mode and a progress bar will show that it is building the page. After a few seconds the page will appear in the document window. The toolbar icons will have changed and there are buttons here which let you test your site to see if it conforms to various accessibility guidelines. Using Preview you will only be able to view the active page in your Freeway interface window. This is an easy way to test a page but while it replicates many features of a browser it's really just a way to get a quick look at a single page as you work. Click on the Page button to return to your Freeway page. This is the end of the first of the three tutorials which will introduce you to working with Freeway 5. The next two tutorials will introduce you to master pages, navigation and a few other features which will let you add functionality and some fun to your site.